Next on GPS, we move to something completely different. After 30 years of silence, in the sense of no new pop songs, Billy Joel has released a terrific new ballad and an astounding video powered by AI that accompanies it. I will talk to the piano man and his collaborator on the project when we come back. Famous last words. These are the last words I have to say. That is the name of the last song on the last pop album Billy Joel released in 1993, more than three decades ago. When I interviewed him a few years ago, I asked him what everybody wanted to know. Why did he stop after such an extraordinary string of hit music? I recognized I'm not a, a prophet, I'm not a philosopher, I'm just a dumb piano player. So I, it's time for me to shut up. Well, thankfully for all of us, the highly modest and self-deprecating musical genius has reversed himself and written again. Turn the Lights Back On was released a month ago and it is a wonderful classic Billy Joel ballad. But I see you now as we laying in the darkness. To talk about the song and its groundbreaking music video, I am thrilled to welcome Billy Joel to GPS along with his collaborator, Freddie Wexler, a Grammy-nominated songwriter and all-round creative mind in the entertainment sphere. So, Billy, what, what changed? What made you finally pick up the pen again? Well, I met Freddie Wexler, and that changed a lot of things. I was hell-bent and determined not to let anyone talk me into going back into harness again, with songwriting. And I met this guy through a mutual friend. And we talked and I didn't realize how much he knew about songwriting and producing and records and all of that. And I was impressed with this guy. He was very, very kind of relentless about trying to get me to think about writing, recording, singing, so after about a year and a half of bouncing around ideas, I heard an idea that he had called Turn the Lights Back On, which was very reflective of my own life at the time. It addressed my issues with my muse, with my songwriting. So I added a few notes here and there and I modified a few things, but uh, it, I recognized this song as being something I I could have written on my own. Now, you've always told me that for you, the music almost always comes first. The notes in, you know, are kind of sitting in your head. That's true. In, in this case, was it the, the lyrics? Was it that idea of turn the lights back on that drew you to the song? The first thing that drew me to the song was the melody. I'm a piano player. And for me, the primary language actually is music, even before there are lyrics. I'm hearing something being felt and expressed just with the notes. So I thought it was a pretty good uh, musical composition when I first heard it. And then the lyrics st struck home. Yes. So Freddie, for you, what was this experience like? This guy is your childhood idol, you told me. It's hard to put into words. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, you know, one of my childhood heroes. I used to close my eyes, listen to listen to his music and imagine it was me on my high school stage uh, performing them. You know, uh, Olivia Rodrigo said at Grammy rehearsals that when it comes to songwriting, Billy Joel is the blueprint. So it's surreal. Um, the truth is, uh, when, I, when I met Billy, I really just selfishly wanted another song as a fan. The fact that I became part of it um, and that we've developed this friendship and relationship is just... Uh, icing on the cake. And do you think there's something about the song that also, you said it's, it, it captures a moment in your life that's, that, that's, very, that's meaningful? Yeah, well, it had a couple of meanings. Uh, one is about a relationship uh, between a man and a woman, and the other meaning is about my own muse, my own uh, songwriting, my own career. Uh, almost asking, do I get a second chance to do this? Because I said I wasn't going to do it anymore. So I'm questioning myself 
But I question myself all the time. And the, the lyric really expressed that very well. So, Billy, now that you've done this, is, can we say the dam has broken, that, that we are going to see uh, a, a series of new Billy Joel songs? I don't know, Fareed. I really don't know. Um, uh, this is all kind of new to me again. Just even going to the Grammys was a whole new experience for me because I'd been there 30 years ago when I was a nominee. And this time I just was just with another, another singer at the Grammys. But I met all these new artists who I was very impressed to meet. I was very happy to see all these people. And I really enjoyed it, which I, I hadn't done back in the past. I wasn't comfortable with competition between musicians. Who's number one? Who's number two? Who's going to win the Grammy? It was kind of uncomfortable. But this time, I enjoyed it. Uh, it was a, a new experience for me. So this is all kind of new again. Everything that was old is new again. All right, stay with us. When we come back in a moment, I want to talk to you about the remarkable music video that Billy and Freddie released for this song and its stunning use of the technology that fascinates us all now, artificial intelligence, when we come back. Billy Joel didn't just turn the lights back on with his first new pop song in decades. He accompanied it with a groundbreaking music video. It uses artificial intelligence to show us Billy Joel over the many decades of his career playing this brand new song. It is stunning. Billy Joel joins me again with the man who conceived of and co-directed the video and co-wrote the song, Freddie Wexler. Um, Billy, I remember you telling me once you don't like music videos in the first place. You, you want people to let their imaginations run wild when they hear a song, right? Yes, well, I always think of myself as someone who should be heard and not seen. Uh, I, didn't sign in this on, I didn't sign on to be an actor. I didn't sign on to be a movie star. I'm a piano player. And uh, sometimes I think, oh, people must be disappointed when they see me, you know, because they may have heard me first. Even when I'm playing live, I, sometimes I tell the audience, don't look at me, just listen. <laughs> music videos are a way to convey the music that someone has written and someone has recorded. So I understand the, the purpose of it, uh, and which is why I've made vi music videos. And Freddie came up to me with this idea of artificial intelligence. And I didn't really know what he was talking about, but I, I did the, uh, this, the recording, the video, and uh, when I saw it, it was kind of an out-of-body experience. I saw myself going through time. It was very moving. So Freddie, this is really your brainchild. What made you imagine this? What, what, what was the impulse here? The idea for it actually came to me in a dream where I imagined a young, you know, 25-year-old Billy singing the opening of the song. Please open the door. And it was Billy as just a kid. And I, it was arresting. Uh, and he was in an empty uh, venue. And when I woke up, I knew this had to be the video. Uh, you know, an empty venue. Uh, four Billy Joels um, and us seamlessly transitioning between them, each one picking up the song where the other one left off. The question was, how in the world do you do that? And the answer, so, AI. Answer that question, how did you do it? How do it? Are those people we are seeing completely AI generated? What's going on? Okay, so AI broad strokes has a couple principles. The main ones are deep learning, and machine learning, okay? Deep learning uh, is something that uses these neural networks that are, that are layered. That's why it's called deep. And what it does is uh, it has the, the ability to analyze. It uses these deep learning algorithms to analyze, in this case, still images and video frames, okay? It recognizes patterns in them. So it starts to be able to understand how Billy ages through time. And then it's able to start creating images. It's much more complicated than, than that. Uh, but, and generative AI, which is this term we constantly hear, is the part that's actually creating uh, the new images. So think of this whole thing almost as an oven, OK? You, uh, these algorithms, deep learning algorithms, learn all this information and start to create a model. The model goes in an oven, and machine learning means it learns through experience. The more it sort of bakes the model, the better it becomes. 
Once you have those models, the idea is you have an actor or somebody who essentially triggers the model. Okay. Um, now, so those those three people who are not Billy as he is now were actors. Yes. So you hired actors, and then the AI presumably is doing effectively the mouth so that it lip syncs exactly the words coming out. So I don't want to speak to like the proprietary tech of Deep Voodoo, who is our tech partner, but public information would suggest that yes, they're the actors underneath certainly are triggering the AI and the models. So now the AI performances. So like for instance, I'm I play 70s Billy, which is the first one you see. So you're the actor in that case. In that one. <laughs> you have to study Billy because if you don't do the expressions that he would, it doesn't look like him. So Billy, when you experiencing or watching all this, like what what is your thought about technology and art and does technology detract from the art? Because you've generally been fairly, you don't have a lot of tech wizardry in you. I mean, you, you basically, the focus has always been on the music. But here you're taking this enormous technological leap. How did you feel about that? I was comfortable because I'm, historically I'm camera shy. I don't like making videos. I don't like having a camera on me and having to present myself visually. I've never been comfortable with that. And when I'm watching this video that Freddie directed, it was hard for me to believe that it wasn't me. It was like the young me singing, and I'm thinking, I don't remember doing this. I don't know this song back then. How did they do this? But in a way, I was kind of hiding behind those characters. So I didn't have to do the whole labor of the video making. I wasn't feeling like, oh, I'm a movie star. I got to look good on the camera or anything like that, because I'm... I'm very self-conscious about that. Uh, and this was kind of a way to present uh, this idea uh, with, with a couple of layers in it. You know, what strikes me about it, Freddie, is you hire all these actors. You've got, obviously, the technicians. There, there's a kind of happy story here about AI that you ended up, you know, if I look at the list of credits, there are, there are a lot of people working on this. So oh, yeah. the AI did not replace jobs it actually meant that it was a much bigger production. Absolutely. Look, advances in technology can be scary. AI, I, I won't lie, I think there will be a lot of bad with AI. But, our, but the truth is, it's here. The technology is here. So we had an opportunity to use it, and our goal was to, to use it positively, to show how it can be used not to replace people, but to actually help realize an artistic vision that would have previously been impossible to realize. By the way, you know, I would never have been able to get this done without my amazing co-director, Warren Fu, who's brilliant, who uh, created an animatic for this entire video. So every shot was, was planned out um, and with and Deep Voodoo, the tech, the tech partners. But you're right. Uh, when you look at the credits, we have way more people on this thing than a video without AI. So. It's not so binary, right? These technologies, there's good, there's bad. And my feeling is as long as they're here, let's learn them and understand them and try to, you know, create awe and, and, and positive impact uh, if we use it. And, and, I, and I feel that we were able to do that. Billy, could you imagine using AI to jumpstart the muse again, to use the AI to come up with a tune, come up with, a, with, a, uh, with lyrics, come up with a storyline? Possibly. Uh, you never know where motivation is going to come from. Hey, Fred, how you doing? I hadn't counted on it meeting someone like Freddie who would motivate me to consider writing again or recording again. So it's possible, yes, absolutely. So in a sense, would it be fair to say this whole experience of meeting Freddie and being exposed to the technology, it has kind of rejuvenated you? Like you were talking about being in the Grammys and kind of enjoying the hustle bustle that you thought you had left behind. Yeah, I was, you know, like I said, hell-bent and determined not to go back into the studio, not to sing, not to record, not to write, because it had become torturous for me. And uh, it was unpleasant. And this was actually a fun experience. I hadn't expected any of it to happen. And it was all rather serendipitous. Uh, and I, you know, I, I didn't hate the process. I wasn't frustrated with it. I wasn't aggravated about it, 
which is a new thing for me because I'm pretty hard on myself. Uh, you know, I've had, I've had criticism in my life, believe me, but nobody's hatcheted me more than myself. <laughs> and this time I enjoyed it. Well, on that note, I, I think uh, every fan of Billy Joel is going to be hoping that this is, the, this is the start of a beautiful new phase of your life. Freddie Wexler, thank you. And Billy Joel, thank you. Thank you, Fareed.